I got a comment on one of my videos where I'm talking about isobaric speakers. I can't recall which one. I probably should have looked this up before I came down here and started this. But the gist of the message was that he was faced with the same problem. He had woofers that would need a bigger box than he was willing to build, and he decided to use them in an open baffle type arrangement. And I didn't answer the comment, but it got me thinking. And, you know, I played with open baffle in the past before uh, with mixed results. I, I, To be honest, I never gave it a real fair chance because I like building speakers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's not much to building a speaker if there's no box, right? If you just have a baffle then, I mean, you can get a little bit fancy with it, but it's still just a baffle and there's no really, no designing, you know, no calculating stuff or anything like that. So I kind of put it aside as something I, I wasn't really interested in. But I figured since I have four woofers and I used two in that mock-up sub that I was using, or built and using down here, I figured I didn't have anything to lose. I could get a you know a scrap of OSB and build something really quick and stick it in the room and compare the two you know directly to see you know you know firsthand whether I'll get the kind of response from an open baffle sub because that's what it is that I need in this room. So that's what I did. I have an old piece of half-inch OSB that's two feet wide and four feet tall. And like I said, this is quick and dirty. I just need to cut two holes in here for the two woofers. And I'm spacing them apart because I want to be able to cut this thing in half. Because I want two speakers in the room eventually, I'll be able to test this arrangement out if it works for me in this big form. So two feet is a pretty wide baffle, but you can extend that by putting wings out the back. And I had some more of that OSB. I cut it into strips that were eight inches wide. So I got those fastened in place. And I also added feet to the bottom so that, you know, it would be less likely to tip over because these woofers are pretty heavy. And then I brought it down here and I tried it in a few different places and ran measurements. I did all this, of course, with the isobaric sub turned off. And what I arrived at, well, it, it actually wasn't a huge difference in the measurements, but just to get it out of the way, because the thing is so big, I stuck it in the corner over there, and that's where it ended up for the rest of the measurements. And so one of the first things that I did was I tuned it to get it as flat as I possibly could, within reason, because I knew that as soon as I saw the first measurement, that I was going to go further with this. I was actually going to cut it in half and I would be spending more time messing with that. And like I mentioned before, I have, uh, like I do all the listening in this room on a computer. I have Equalizer APO installed on it. And since I'm measuring from the listening position right here where I am, I can fine tune the response so that it's nice and flat and even at this location. Now I'm going to stop for a second and talk about what you're looking at here because I know some people are not familiar with what they are seeing and that's a frequency response graph that shows the response of the speakers, what they're putting out and being picked up by the microphone here at my listening position right here. So you, what you're shooting for is something that's pretty flat. Okay, and, and actually, this is really good. Anybody that's familiar with this kind of stuff will look at this and say that's really good response. However, you can see that it doesn't go down too deep. It kind of draw, starts dropping off, I think, I'm trying to remember here, around 30 hertz. And when we compare it to my isobaric sub, that was getting down a lot lower. That started to fall off around 20 hertz. That's what the measurements show. There's obviously more bass coming from the isobaric sub. That was not unexpected. But when I listened, I really couldn't tell the difference. I was experiencing the same amount of bass from both here in this room. And I guess that's what's important. What I did here, though, is that the open baffle speaker was struggling a bit. I played some movie soundtracks, really heavy, low bass in them, and whenever it struck a really deep, low bass note, 
the open baffle speaker couldn't keep up with it. When I went over and looked at it, I could see that it was pumping in and out a bit too far, probably getting very close to its excursion limit. Now to get there, I was pushing it harder than I normally would be, but I don't want anything that's going to be limited in some way. I, you know, I'm sitting here and I say I can't turn that up because, you know, I'll have problems with my subwoofer. But then I also knew that I was just using two. In the end, I'll be using four if I implement this. So that will add a lot more response. And then I'll be able to turn the amplifier down to get the same output. So I pressed on and I actually cut that box in half. And I positioned them on the floor, as you can see right here, and I measured the response. And they're wired up in the same way they were in the big one, uh, in parallel together on one channel, so that they're giving them basically the same output. But it was better where it was. Okay, I think it was the proximity of the woofer to the floor, getting that boundary reinforcement there, and struggling a little bit less because you're picking up a little bit more efficiency from them being closer to the floor so they didn't have to be turned up as loud to get the same effect like I did all these adjustments I've got another amplifier that's driving these speakers so I can adjust them independently and jack up the bass too that's something I should mention that I had to do is crank up the bass I think three decibels maybe four decibels on the Yamaha receiver I have here that's powering these woofers so I left them like that and used them for a couple of nights to make sure that um, I like the effect. I'm liking what I got from it. And I did. So I decided to go a little bit further. And what I did was I actually reduced the width of the baffle just as an experiment as well to see how much that would reduce the amount of bass output I would get. Now I didn't take a picture of that, but you can just imagine it's the, you know, the way they were before except narrower. And uh, here's the measured results from that. You can see that there's a little bit of bass loss, but not a huge amount, and I can live with that. And it also gives me, you know, a data point to go by, you know, when I, like, build the real version of these, which I've committed to doing, then I'll know how wide the baffle has to be at a minimum to get the response that I want. And then after listening to those for a couple of days, I decided to go all in. I took apart the isobaric sub, and I used parts from that to build the two new baffles that will accommodate the four woofers now instead of two. And here's what that looks like. And you can see that there's not a big difference here. What you get when you switch from two woofers to four woofers is more power handling. I can set the amplifier lower and still get the same amount of output. So that struggle I was having before is no longer an issue. So where does that leave me? Well, like I hinted before, I've got to come up with a design for the new speakers. And I've also got to decide whether I'm going to go for open baffle with the rest of it as well. Because, you know, the original design, uh, these woofers were just a subwoofer. And they're still just a, a subwoofer. But I have another section that I need to make that handles all the rest. These ELACs that I'm using here are just temporary. The permanent speakers are coming. There'll be a full build on that. So that should be interesting. See what I decide. And in the meantime, I'll probably be doing some more experimenting and testing.